Hello, I'm Ryan F9 and these are the greatest riding shoes. Let's put our best foot forward with the TCX X Wave. And those of us who play in the moto industry know this as the other waterproof shoe from TCX. By that, I mean that the X Wave walks in shadow, a shadow cast by the legendary TCX X Street and its recent replacement, the Street Ace. Collectively, they make the go-to riding shoes for pretty much every street motorcyclist everywhere, ever. But I prefer the underdog X Wave because it's softer. Softer leather and more importantly, a more flexible sole. I've spent 12 hour days walking in both the X Wave and the X Street. In either shoe I was comfortable, but only in the X Wave did I forget that I was wearing motorcycle footwear at all. So it's cloud level comfortable. It's also kind of protective. I have really good ankle armor on each side, CE rated, but the heel counter and the toe cup, more mediocre. You're sacrificing some safety here versus the X Street. But to be honest, riding shoes aren't all that protective to begin with, so I think it's worth it. The X-Wave's waterproof membrane is extremely soft and doesn't suffocate my foot. I wore this shoe for the XSR 900 review, which involved 10 hours on a blacktop runway in 35 degree heat. By the end of the day, I'd stripped off every piece of motorcycle clothing I brought except these shoes, which were still cool enough to wear. The X-Wave comes with a removable shifter strap that goes around here, but the thing was useless. It kept migrating up the toe, and it was also annoying to walk on. I actually lost mine because I never wanted to use it. With distressed full grain leather, I don't really care that my shifter leaves a mark. Fitment wise, the X-Wave runs slim. Some people call that a European cut, but feet are the same everywhere, so I'm just gonna call it stylish. Closure is done with the very typical shoelaces that you learn to tie in kindergarten. Yes, it's theoretically possible that you could catch one on a foot peg and topple over at the next stoplight, but fashion is pain. My next choice is the Alpine Stars Parlor. This is a caviar and Chateau Lafitte kind of shoe. Basically what we have is a motorcycle boot designed to go under dress pants. Italian leather, classic cut, slightly pointed toe, and none of the shifter panels, the logos, and the other telltale signs of motorcycle footwear. For all your coworkers will know, this is just a dress shoe. Perhaps slightly chunky since the toe is padded to withstand shifter abuse, and these round ankle plates are best covered up, but still, it's a chameleon. Protection is identical to that X-Wave we just saw. Really good armor on both the pointy bits of my ankle. It's dual density for progressive impact absorption. And then the toe box and the heel counter are more average, and the sole is flexible and walkable, if not that protective. Had Alpine Stars ended it there, the parlor still would have made this list. The usefulness of a dress motorcycle shoe is undeniable for commuters who wear a suit to work. But A-Stars earned their place among the best riding shoes twice over by working in some hidden features. There's a dress star membrane in here, which gets a passing grade for waterproofing and breathability. And the sole has laser ablated a grip, which is just a fancy way of saying there are tiny ridges so you won't slip on oily asphalt. My only beef with this shoe has to do with putting it on. For one, there's a side zipper and it's totally unnecessary. I mean, if you're doing a lace-up design, just let me tie the laces and leave the rest of the leather seamless. And the other thing I hate is that there's a stitch on the insole. It's really weird. It feels like there's something stuck underneath my foot for the first five minutes every time I wear the parlor. Now we're going to move towards a sport style with the Alpine Stars Faster 2. Don't let the technical design fool you. This is still a very casual shoe in terms of protection and comfort. Yes, there's a toe box, heel counter, and ankle armor, but it's all quite soft. Same goes for the sole. And this toe slider is better than nothing, but it certainly isn't a proper replaceable brick. In fact, if you ride like a real boss, you'll grind through the pliable plastic in no time. But the Faster 2 looks great under jeans. It has that European F1 inspired look. It's also extremely lightweight to walk in. Plus pricing is very aggressive around the $200 mark and they're making it in men's and women's waterproof and regular versions. Alpine Stars is gearing up to sell a lot of these boots. And I think they will, because casual sporties are quite rare. Normally sport bike footwear is smacked with enough hard parts to choke a rhino, but I like that Alpine Stars resisted the temptation. Sure, this microfiber chassis will withstand the heat of an engine. The faux carbon fiber makes a decent surface for shifting. The Velcro strap here holds my laces out of the way, and I get a smidgen of reflectivity at the back. But despite all the motorcycling benefits, this is still more of a comfortable shoe than a protective one. And if you've ever heard the term squid, you know there's a market for that. A couple things I don't like. For one, Alpine Stars nicks the reflective eyelets from the first generation in favor of this speed lacing system derived from technology developed in MotoGP. Wow. For all I can tell, these are just basic shoelaces, only they aren't shiny anymore. Lame. Also, the shoe runs really narrow at the ball of the foot, so wider feet should beware. 
Now, let's screw the comfy shoes. If I want bulletproof safety from a shorty boot, what can I get? For a sport rider, it has always been the SMX2. Yes, this is the exact same recommendation I made last year, and yes, this is the third Alpine Stars in a row. Sorry CD speed ride, sorry CD burner. I choose the boots that I like best, whether they make a nice variety video or not. So, our SMX2 is the archetypical aggressive sport shoe. I get a proper replaceable toe slider, rigid steel shank sole for quick foot controls, shifter grip panel, hard shell heel cockpit, rock solid toe box, no ankle armor though, which is a bummer, but at least the contoured upper is meant to interface with an Alpine Stars shin protector, and the chassis itself is full grain leather, so abrasion resistance is not an issue. The SMX2 is a full on racing boot for seven inches. And that height is important. See, Alpine Stars knows that a rock hard racer is only gonna be walkable if it's low enough. That's why they gave me a dropped Achilles cutout to facilitate ankle movement. The result is no moccasin, but it is much more comfortable than a full height race boot. And indeed, the SMX2 is also easier to walk in than the newer SMX3, which Alpine Stars made a smidge taller for no apparent reason. Finally, a very protective ADV and dual sport option would be the first gear Katmandu Low. Most ADV riders don't actually use shorties because they have a nasty habit of dropping motorcycles onto their feet. But there are some ADV riders, myself included, who prefer a short boot. When the adventure goes beyond two-wheel territory, it's nice to have something I can hike in. The great thing about this Kathmandu Low is that it works both on and off the bike. The toe, heel, and ankle protection makes an absolute tank out of my foot. And then there's a grippy heat shield on the inner side, which is nice for when I'm standing up and pinching against the engine casing for stability. Speaking of which, this sole is rigid enough to provide a stable platform for the standing riding position. It's also durable enough to survive serrated metal foot pegs. The shifter panel is durable too, a proper semi-rigid plastic to withstand sharp shifts. But despite all that adventure spec, the Kathmandu Low is still walkable. At eight inches, the ankle movement is blissfully free. And unlike every other boot on my list, the sole is within spitting distance of a proper hiker. Now, before you start thinking I'm on First Gear's payroll, let me rage at a few screw ups. For one, the waterproof and breathable membrane in here keeps me dry for two seasons at best. This stuff doesn't last. Also, breathable is a misnomer because the Kathmandu Low is stuffy. First Gear stitched a mesh comfort liner over top for better airflow, which only helps a wee bit. Also, these are the worst buckles I've seen in recent memory. Doing them up means threading this lever through the loop, and that's not really an easy thing to do. But the Kathmandu Low is still my favorite ADV shorty, and one of the only ones to hit our market since my beloved Icon Patrols got the boot. I do wish that First Gear gave us an inner booty to make a tight seal, because as it is, this shoe gapes at the top a fair bit, but Beggars can't be choosers. I should finally mention that this is genuine leather mixed with not so genuine synthetics, and that keeps the price to a low, low $175. And those are my favorite riding shoes. Thanks for watching.